Hey guys, this is Ranch and here playing the second commentary. This is gonna be the winners match in group G with run through two of the big fall on myself. It's gonna be between stats and sea shield on triathlon. Uh, fun fun map for some Protoss play, so looking forward to this one. At four o'clock in brown turn play, we're gonna have Sea Shield. Here two from now on referred to as a C, simple because it's shorter and easier to pronounce and say at the bottom left hand corner at the eight o'clock position in yellow, Protoss player gonna be stats. So I know this group is coming in very late because I believe that the first match of the round 16 have ever been played, but they shall be cast tomorrow, providing uh, nothing gets in the way of that. I will be doing, you know, hanging out with uh, Tell Silence then, but, uh, you know, I'll still find some time to, to get some games out there. But uh, really looking forward to this one. Um, we're really looking forward to see what these guys can bring. Um, stats, I definitely got a favor C here. I mean... C, just an overall better player, I think, and I think it's finally time for him to start playing at the level I know he can play. He's been playing StarCraft for so long and extremely high level in Pro League. He's had a few mini slumps, if you will, and he's never broken through in a Star League, and I feel that it's an absolute shame. I feel that he has lately, especially he's developed some of that clutch that he needs to be successful in StarCraft, so I definitely look forward to see him and I definitely think he's gonna move out of this group with a win against stats here I just I don't doubt that right now I really think that's exactly what's gonna happen he's gonna start off by walling off on the opposite side uh, it does seem like stats heading on early probe and they'll still see a gateway coming up for him there so I'm wondering whether he's actually gonna to try to go for a 12 next inside of his own base at that secondary probably gonna be the case in there we're firing me on the way for C um, so this might not be C's best matchup, but he's still an overall such a solid player. And I think on triathlon, as long as you don't allow uh, a process player to get too far into the late game, you can still abuse positions a little bit. That 7 o'clock uh, secondary is extremely vulnerable to drops for a significant long time, um, especially for non-turn or races because it's such so much easier to drop against them, especially, to, especially Protoss, I find, can become extremely extremely vulnerable to draw to vo early vulture drops unless they clear the eggs with dragoons and get some dragoons in there uh, because you generally won't f see them with any aerial units uh, any units any other units except for dragoons to take out any air that is probes got me gonna uh, try to get in there but not gonna be able to that wall of course you can make a wall in on that ramp with only a supply depot and the barracks that's enough and that's very good when you can actually do that. Allows a turn significant amount of space and freedom marine also out there so that's gonna make sure that a probe doesn't go anywhere. Um, we're going to see whether she actually tries to go for a very early push. Uh, we're going to see on the factory cat one is actually going to try to push off too. It does seem like, okay, only one single STV on the gas, so he is going to be putting down his command, sir. Uh, might go for that secondary location uh, beyond the X at the 3 o'clock position. Uh, might decide to put inside the base to flow down to a natural expansion. Going inside the own base is safer. Um, generally, pro players that on this, even on this map, drops would be would be good. So maybe going for reaver, early reavers would be successful. She is just going to be able to go in there and put that up. But if he gets an eBay fast enough, he's going to be able to protect himself against any possible drops. I don't see a lot of pro players go for early reaver play against turns at all these days. They tend to want to go for ground armies, especially in this map. You tend to want to go for ground army and transition into arbiters, and that's mostly what Protoss players are doing these days. They just stay with stick with the ground army, push back the turns until they get arbiters out there, and then they start playing very aggressively and expanding aggressively. SCV scout going to be able to get in there until the dra initial dragoon pops out. So my voice sounds out right there. But yeah, as soon as that initial... Um, as soon as those initial Dragoon pops up, it's not going to happen. SCV not being able to get past those eggs. Um, not quite. Kind of a little bit of a hard time, but pretty much can assume that the base is up. You know, initial Volts are also out there. And not going to be able to do much because the initial Dragoon is going to be out there very soon as well to counteract that. There you go. The Dragoon killing the SCV second gateway also coming up. Vulture meanwhile push, pushes back. Goes back as soon as he spots that Marine also inside the base for C. Going to pick off those neutral Arbiters. And we're going to be seeing, probably, probably going to be seeing a robotics facility and observatory uh, for stats to get that scout out there because he hasn't had a scout inside that base this entire game and he doesn't really exactly know what C is going for. Um, and uh, without early Vulture, I don't really see any early push coming in from C Academy coming in right, right now, just getting his natural expo up. We're going to, uh, will be interesting to see whether they actually will be going for any early push to start things off. With that natural expo not down there and, ex and, the ramp that you have to fight up, I 
don't think an early push is the best option for a turn player. He can try to go for just to put the Protoss player on the defensive. Um, just to kind of, you know, consolidate his forces inside of his own base. But trying to break up that ramp is extremely difficult. And you don't want to try to go for that unless you're absolutely sure what you're doing. Uh, C does have additional tank out, but just going to break up the eggs. He w did also only go for one single marine. Felt extremely safe with that wall, one single marine. So he's playing defensive. And I actually like this play. Going to go for an additional command center inside the base. Actually f oh, closer to the inside 9 o'clock rather than extra expo. So actually going to take him a while to fill up that down. Um, still didn't see an eBay out there for him just in case to put turrets down also to make sure the observers aren't too much of a pain. Do think that that building next to the command center should be an eBay. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to be seeing some turrets coming up fairly soon. A couple of tanks out there now for C. Still only off one factory. Working on his siege mode most likely. Um, observers are also up for his opponent on the opposite side and range working in. Still has that one single vulture out there which does have a kill. I think it was from a probe scout but not going to be able to get in there. Is going to be able to get this. I think he's getting a spot on the fact that expansion being put in there. So C now has the opportunity to go push. There is an opening and that's your expo. Uh, probably not going to be seeing a push yet. He's adding in a factory. Start mass producing some more vultures and I think once they have siege in mind he's going to be able to tr go and try to put on some assault and some damage on that natural expo that Stas trying to put up for himself. Just going to be seeing whether C gets that. It's just so interesting that he puts his command center this far off. Seems like he wants to just float it towards the left side, the inside natural. But with the position setting up for himself now, he is going to just for his natural expo. Got to play very conservatively, very defensively. Um, rather than going for early, any pushes, he's just going to stay back home, going to get his third base up safely on the opposite side. Stats is getting his target going, so he's going to transition to Arbiters as he puts down his natural expo. So both players are going to be on three bases, and now we're probably going to be seeing C really kick it into high gear. Probably going to be seeing some five factories or such soon enough. Really kick it up. Only still has one refinery in there, so we're going to see that second refinery come down, uh, followed by the third refinery, and we're going to see large, large number of factories being kicked in, five to six maybe even factories, and once he gets that production going, that's when he's going to want to go out there and be aggressive, while Stat's going to find himself playing off second Stargate right off the gate, so I'm actually wondering if there's going to be a Fleet Beacon, third Stargate in there, so we are probably going to be seeing a Fleet Beacon in there somewhere, uh, th Arbiters of three Stargates, of course, completely unprecedented and never happens for that matter. Um, still don't see an armory out there for C, so he ne definitely needs to get a spot on this. Two targets themselves this early, very suspicious. Still don't see any Fleet Beacon out there. There you go, there's the Fleet Beacon. Uh, of course, Triathlon is a map where uh, this where carriers can be extremely effective. Um, a lot of space. There's a very, very open middle that unfortunately they can get caught in, but if you fight amongst the sides of the map with the carriers. If you get them amongst the sides of the map, fight beyond the eggs. There's a lot of ridges that block off and a lot of opportunities for carriers to do a massive amount of damage. Just take advantage, be beyond the high ground if your opponent's on the high ground, beyond the low ground if you're on the high ground. Take a, Abuse that completely. So he's gonna go for carriers. Doesn't have a lot of ground forces at all. S just C has to get a scan on this, get his armory out there, start massing Goliaths like crazy. Or else he's going to find himself in a lot of trouble. Mostly just amassing tanks right now. He does have an army. He's working on weapons one. Adding an additional faction. I believe that's his fourth and fifth. But I'm not quite sure if he has caught on to the fact that there is a massive carriers out there. Still don't see a single Goliath out there for him. He's going to get that out there as soon as possible. Stats also has a significant number of Dragoons. Not much else. So he's going to be hoping to utilize Goons and Carriers together just to do the damage. And I think looking at the minimap, I think C knows... I'm not quite sure if he spotted the Fleet Beacon itself, but he knows about those two Stargates. Not quite sure if he spotted the Fleet Beacon itself alongside... I'm sorry, alongside the uh, third Stargate. But those two Stargates early on should already be giving C a sort of a clue what's happening because turn Protoss players generally only get one Stargate to start off just to get an initial couple of... the initial few Arbiters out there and then add a second one. Uh, so definitely should be a clue as to what the stats is going for for C here. Oh god, my back is freaking killing me. Additional gateways banned in Citadel, so he's start gonna start working on a ground army to 